Well, hi, welcome to my shop. So, despite the uh, fiasco on my last uh, video where I put the 636 radio together and it didn't work, I am now going to attempt the same thing with the 535 and hopefully get a little bit of a better result once I get it back in the cabinet. Uh, and the 636, you know, it might just be a defective uh, rectifier, too. I'm not too sure. So, right off the bat, I got these two uh, pieces obviously fit in these corners. Well, this one's got a lot of writing on the back. Licensed by Canadian Radio Patents. I've never heard of that before. Okay, nothing special here. How was this originally put on? It's probably stapled in tacked in. Looks like there's staples here. Looks to me like it was tacked in and then somebody stapled it later. So did all those nails stay in here? Here's one. Uh, one nail anyway on that side. There's a nail down here too. Two nails in the middle piece here. Could be a nail right there, but I doubt you would ever want to put a nail right into there. That'd be, that'd be a little reckless, I think. And the other side, most of the nails are gone. All of them are gone from this side. Any remain in the cardboard. So when I got this radio, these pieces were just flopping around inside. And you could, you could see how, how this design would lead to a bit of a problem. People are going to tend to grab the radio like this. And when they do, they're going to punch in the, uh, the cloth. I mean, it's just about a guarantee with a radio like this, it's going to happen. Even if you pick it up from below, your, your thumbs will tend to want to go in. That's probably what's happened to it. Okay, that being the story. Is there anything I should do to these? No, I think I should I should put these in just as they are. I can't imagine making some kind of significant improvement. I mean, you can see how dull the uh, cloth has gotten compared to here where it's covered and protected. So it's, it's definitely gone dull, but what can you do? I don't want to replace all that. That's too much work. So, you know, in terms of tacking this in, how should I do it? Little tiny screws going through the holes where the nails were with washers on the back. And if I could put four uh, screws in these corners, just in the just four, that's going to be enough to hold it up. Uh, I'd, I'd rather be putting little screws in than trying to to uh, uh, nail it. Oops, I feel something here. Here's one of the nails. One of the nails is here. some more here. No. Let me double check this one because if you leave a nail in it's going to interfere. just at the top. And the bottom of this one's been chewed on all down through here. That looks like most chewing. Not so much on there. Okay, I gotta find uh, eight tiny screws. Mm, that, that might not be too easy.
Okay, I think that's good. Lovely. Okay, let's take a look at the chassis here. I'm sure I've got a few more things to finish up on it. Let's take a look. Oops. Power cord. I haven't put a power cord on this guy either. About the same as the last. Pretty much identical to the last radio. Okay, so gotta get a power cord and put it on. So I've ended up in the same place with this radio as I did with the 636 with this wire laying very low in the radio, ready to contact the bottom plate and very I'm having a hard time securing insulation right around this spot here. So I'm going to tape it. I don't normally like to put tape in the back of these radios. Um, I try to avoid that, but a little hard to avoid here. And I notice the old style tape is like uh, friction tape. It's not, it's not the modern tape like this, and it stands up really well over a long period of time. It tends to get harder and better and harder and better all the time. This tape I'm putting on uh, tends to loosen, dry up, and, and the glue gives up on it and the tape comes off. You know, like say 20 years from now, this, this tape will be coming off. Gee, what will I do then? So, uh, as you know, the other radio suffered from some kind of short circuiting in the radio, something going on anyway with those loud pops, and it could have been this wire in that radio, though I don't think so because I. Uh, I managed to tuck these up. See, these are the transformer lead wires, and they're as stiff as can be. And any amount of pushing, you just run a risk. So unfortunately, the plate is going to lay right on this. I don't think there's any doubt of that. OK, we'll finish up on the strain, strain relief here. I think that's good. Tighten it down. There we are. Now, is there anything else I needed to do to this radio at the last minute before putting it into the cabinet? The fact is, as I'm going to demonstrate with the other radio, I can always take it back out of the cabinet. Oh, i got to clean the uh, glass. That's a big deal. Uh, I think that's about it. Just clean the glass and in it goes. Fantastic. That's going to make such a big difference. I think I'm going to film this. So, you know, I'm just cleaning glass here. The The words are on the back of the plates. So I don't have to worry about them. All I'm doing the front. I start with just water. Nothing more. I try to get as much of the gritty stuff off as I can. You know, that, that yellowy color some smoke from cigarettes. That looks pretty good already. Of course you really want to do this while the radio's oh, I'm making it laugh. It's it's so happy. He's happy because he's going in his cabinet and he knows it. He's getting all Preened up here. Back in the safety of his cabinet. Fantastic, that just came out beautiful. Okay, I think it's time to go in there. Oh, I got a little ahead of myself there. I have this bottom plate to put on for crying out loud. Now, this, this radio came these attachments on it and at first I wasn't sure was this original or not it's actually kind of neat how it's done but no it's not really very neat at all no this isn't original this is somebody's add-on and it's it's I'm taking it off um, I think this was an attempt at getting a phono input set up on here
10 mile long screw. Everything has a story. Treat your screws gently because you never know what's going on in their private lives. What they've been through. There we are. Cut that off. Great. screws in here. There's only three screws. these in with a lot of screws is uh, to firmly ground this uh, big metal plate to the chassis in as many places as possible. Uh, three screws. The sound of the paper is the paper that's underneath the, on the under underneath this plate. There. Trying not to ruin that piece of paper. Here we go. We're almost there. Good. Big gap here. And I don't care. Okay, let's see what it looks like on the front. Beautiful. Now this is up quite snug. The glass is up snug here. Perfect. Fantastic. These are all nicely centered. Oh. Thumbs up. I got the buttons. Oh, I didn't put the buttons in. I gotta glue this. This is supposed to be the uh, felt, but uh, not much felt. Looks like two. I don't know what that is. Two lines of felt there. Not much left to it. I think I gotta glue that back in place. I gotta clean the knobs and the buttons yet. Oh, there's always more to do. Okay, just putting in the felt here. A little bit of glue. There we are. Great. Got all the 
the buttons cleaned up. Knobs are ready to go. Fantastic. Okay, let's take a look at the front. There we are, all the buttons sticking out. These buttons have uh, labels on them put on with a Dynamo label maker, which was a very popular around the house label maker back in the uh, 70s. So I'm, I'm not going to take them off and try to change them. In, in my view, this becomes part of the history and the story of this radio. Uh, if these were in really poor shape, maybe I would do something about it, but they're not bad. Just the on off ones missing. Great, knobs are lined up. I got three knobs here. I got three knobs, I only cleaned two of them. What happened? I missed one. Well, you can't even tell which one I cleaned and which one I didn't. Oh well. Okay, next step. Screw it in there. Screw it in place. Okay, we reached the point where we're ready to test the radio now. Fantastic. Uh, about three or four times now I practically push my fingers through this <laughs> even after uh, explaining that, that you don't want that to happen I've almost done it a few times here okay this is the uh, loop antenna of course and we're going to try them out just on AM for now button is pushed. Sounded really nice. Power's off. I'll plug them in. Come back here. Put the brake on here. Okay. Tone. Volume's down. Broadcast shortwave. I think I got these in the right order. Broadcast over here. Tuning's free. Feels really nice in fact. Okay, now, last radio, this did not go well. <laughs> I'm a little extra nervous this time. This, this radio has been sitting in my shop for a couple weeks since I finished it. This will be the first time I've seen it on since then. Okay, so we'll go with dim lights. Perfect. Set is off. No lights. Switch is working good. I'm go broadcast. That's not so good. Okay, could have been a little better this time when I put the power on, the dim lights should come on. And go down, and then come back up. Boy, they ever go down. Up, oh, here they come. Perfect. We'll leave, the, leave the dim lights on for now. Volume. shaky start here. Emergency vehicles dealing with this problem so it's jammed up approaching Taking a look over the Toronto bound QEW, we do have construction. Let's see if my antenna is not tuned yet. Yeah. Two left lanes are currently closed, so it's jammed up from past Nicola Tesla. We're also looking at some maintenance blocking the Jane ramps to the eastbound 407 and heading westbound on the 403. Some minor construction at Winston Churchill, the left lane's blocked and it's not slowing you down. You will find that the 427 is currently moving at the limit. No issues on the 400. Uh, if you do need to uh, get downtown, I would definitely suggest avoiding the southbound DVP right now. The holidays are coming, so make the most of the road home in a 2018 BMW X1. Visit your GTA retailer today. And now to check on the forecast, here's Harold to say.
I cried in there, but on the windy side, a new man called to me out isolated. Like, there's nothing oh, to worry about. I don't have it on full yet. This afternoon, I have three, but for anyone driving up into the snow belts and into the Georgian Bay area, there are heavier flurries there. The this evening, a few flurries continuing in the snow belts, a low of minus Beautiful. five, and tomorrow mainly cloudy. Nice talk. Could see some flurries or just a very light dusting of snow tomorrow afternoon, a high of plus two. Right now it's cloudy, the wind from the west, 18 kilometers an hour. It's one degree at Pearson, today's Galaxy high is three. Pearson is the airport in Toronto. A new deadline of midnight tonight. The hope is sometime between now and then workers at Canada Post will agree to a new deal. Uh, that's right. We still have a postal strike going on here in Canada. The uh, season's coming, the Christmas season. The post office gets busy delivering packages. The, uh, it's one of these rotating strikes, so it's not the whole system's down. But it's managed to generate huge backlogs uh, of stuff in the postal system, including people's government marijuana is held up. Oh, my gosh. Well, this is working really good. I, I really like this. Now, I think we're listening to 680, and it's showing up at 660. It has suggested it could act as quickly as Sunday to end the labor dispute if rotating strikes continue beyond the midnight deadline. This way. An estimated one hey. million packages oh, that's not the tuning. <laughs> <laughs> How about here? Well, the, tone, the volume control affects the tone. Canada with free delivery on orders over $1,000. Not sure why. Okay, let me tune the antenna again. The guests on the program are employees of the advertiser. Opinions expressed are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. 640, so we're right at for on all about those 6, uh, 25. That's where we ended up. Animated Got that a little wrong, but you know what? You can do a lot of final adjustments with everything back in the cabin. Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Okay, the sound is fantastic. Uh, 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Arthur, thanks for hanging <laughs> on. How are you? I, I keep thinking this is the tuning knob here. Really, really, really uh, make your day. Uh, it's 590. It well, I think we should give the short wave band a shot. A fishing shark. So that noise you heard is the uh, shop shop noise, the interference that's in here, the loop antennas. Okay, I have to run and make sure my antenna is sw switched into the shop here. Be right back. doubts about this antenna but let's give it a go short wave so we're down around six megahertz we're likely to get some stuff up in here keep trying to tune the radio with the tone control You may 
have a testimony. Sounds like the AVC is not functioning well in this radio because uh, the signal is going up and down. When his voice goes down, you'd expect noise to come up. Not much. Let's go and find another. See, when I'm tuned between stations, the radio's sensitivity should come up. It doesn't seem to be coming up. you know this is uh, general conditions for short wave are really poor but I expect to get a little bit of something up here if the volume up full at this point so I don't think we're gonna go hunting for short wave with this radio This is uh, most certainly an uh, American uh, signal coming from about a thousand miles away or so. And we're not going to get anything down here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the radio's coming more to life down here. Or the antenna is. Now there's a station down here at 660, a shortwave station, which is actually a rebroadcast of a AM broadcast station in Toronto on uh, 660. Sometimes you can pick it up, but no, not with this radio. Oh, well, you know, not bad, uh, because, uh, not bad. That's what I should say about that. A lot better than the other radio. So that's what I'm going to get back to. I'm going to take the... Uh, we're going to poke around with the other radio and try to sort out the problems with it. But uh, this guy is finished for now. Anyway, you know, uh, when I finish these, they're seldom 100%. I'm really not killing myself to get to 100%. I really just want to get these things to be useful uh, so somebody won't be tempted to throw it in the garbage next time. Uh, like, this won't stay in my hands forever. Anyway, I think that's good. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll get back to the other one now.